The aim of this lightboard video is to provide you with an overview of the ventricular system of the brain, which is where cerebral spinal fluid, CSF, is produced and disseminated from the lateral ventricles, flowing all the way through and around the subarachnoid space, and then entering back into the venous blood system via the superior sagittal sinus. Specifically, we have three main ventricles that are going to be located within the cranial cavity. So firstly, the biggest and the largest is going to be the lateral ventricles, and the lateral ventricles can be disseminated or broken up into a variety of different parts. Located then in the floor of the lateral ventricle, we have the choroid plexes. So remember that the choroid plexes, when you're looking at a CT scan, are going to be hyperdense. So they're going to be your bright white structures because of the fact that they contain calcium. So cerebral spinal fluid is produced by the choroid plexes. It is then going to fill the lateral ventricle. And then from the lateral ventricle, it is going to then pass through the interventricular foramen, also called the foramen of Munro, into the third ventricle. In my opinion, the third ventricle looks a bit like the head of a bird. So the third ventricle is located within the diencephalon, which is going to be within and in relation to the thalamus and the hypothalamus. From here, CSF is then going to pass posterior and inferior coursing along with the brainstem through a structure known as the cerebral aqueduct. As I've drawn on from the cerebral aqueduct, CSF then passes into the fourth ventricle, which is going to be located between the cerebellum and the pons. From here, CSF can then be distributed two ways. So located just inferior to the fourth ventricle, we have three apertures. So firstly, within the midline, we have the median aperture. This is also referred to as the foramen of Magendi. And we have two lateral apertures, which are known as the foramen of Ludwig. From these apertures, cerebral spinal fluid is then going to circulate within the subarachnoid space through the spinal cord, coming back up and then circumventing or surrounding the brain within the subarachnoid space and then also sitting within or filling the cisterns. So just in terms of completing our picture, I'm just going to go back and draw in the choroid plexes that correspond to both the third and fourth ventricle. And then also, I just want us to go back and fill in the specific parts of the lateral ventricles. So because the lateral ventricles are such a big structure, it's important to be familiar with the major terminology pertaining to the horns, which are going to be the projections, anteriorly, posteriorly, and inferiorly. These are really important to get your head wrapped around the location and the structure before you look at cross-sectional two-dimensional scans. So firstly, if we're referring to the anterior aspect of the lateral ventricles. So remember the lateral ventricles are going to be a paired structure. So we have one on either side of the cerebral hemispheres. Anteriorly, we have the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. We then have the body of the lateral ventricle inferior and posterior to the body of lateral ventricles, we have a triangular shaped region, which is going to connect the body to the posterior horns, which is referred to as the trigone. And then more inferiorly, as we start getting down into the vicinity of the temporal lobe, we have the inferior horn or the temporal horn. So you might now be wondering, well, where actually does cerebral spinal fluid go once it's exited our median and lateral apertures? So firstly, if we consider the median aperture, CSF is going to flow directly into a cistern that's going to be located more inferiorly and also the closest to the fourth ventricle, which is going to be the cerebromedullary cistern or the cisterna magna. 
And then once it's passed through the cisterna magna, it's then going to course posteriorly and superiorly around the cerebellum and back up in front of the great vein. And this is going to then fill a cistern referred to as the cistern of the great vein. This can also then be referred to as a superior cistern. And then CSF is going to enter back into the subarachnoid space surrounding the cerebrum. If we then consider the course from the lateral apertures, CSF is going to flow down the spinal cord back up and around the anterior aspects of the brainstem. So the first cistern that we have immediately anterior to the pons is going to be the pons or the pontine cistern. From the pontine system, it's then going to course superiorly until it's in front of the peduncles and the cistern is then referred to as the interpeduncular cistern. And then lastly, from here, it then courses anteriorly as it flows inferior and around the pituitary gland. Just in front of the pituitary gland, we have another dilation, which is referred to as the supracellary cistern, so superior to the cella tersica. This is also referred to as the chiasmatic cistern. So then lastly, from here, it's then going to circulate anteriorly around the frontal lobe within the subarachnoid space. We can notice if we're looking at the subarachnoid space, we have these little projections that are referred to as arachnoid villi. These arachnoid villi are then going to communicate with the superior sagittal sinus within the dural space. And then CSF drains back into the superior sagittal sinus. From the superior sagittal sinus, it's then going to course to the transverse sinuses. From the transverse sinus, it then going to drain into the sigmoid sinus. And from the sigmoid sinus, it then gets distributed into the jugular vein. The jugular vein is then going to return and blood directly back into the superior vena cava. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope that you've found this overview of the ventricles and the flow of cerebral spinal fluid informative for your studies.